Welcome to the corn planting depth and the corn on corn omission plot. My name is Keith Trannell. I'm the field sales agronomist from Ardale and Dumont. Along with me today is Tyler Sprain, field sales agronomist from Kessley, and assisting us will be Lauren Furness, field sales agronomist from Buckeye. First, let me tell you a little bit about this demonstration area. Behind me is the corn planting depth. We have multiple replications of corn that was planted at one, two, three, and four inch depths. It was planted at a population of 34,500. It was planted with an eight row Kinsey planter that's worth about $2,500, and it's got about $18,000 worth of precision equipment hanging on it. Behind you is the corn on corn omission addition trial. This is very similar to the one that we did a year ago and similar to the ones that Dr. Fred Below has done in the past. The major difference between this and the others is this is corn on corn, the others have been corn on soybeans. There are five individual management strategies that we're looking at today, trying to understand the interaction of those strategies. Those five things that are either added or removed were increased plant population, additional fertilizer, additional nitrogen, an application of headline, or additional traits to the original Roundup Ready Hybrid. The objective of the trial is to identify the positive impact that these five inputs have on corn yield as well as the interaction of those multiple inputs. In the standard trial, we have a 110 day Roundup Ready Hogemeyer Hybrid 8065. It was planted at a population of 32,000. We applied 200 pounds of spring ammonia with NSERF, a 27-80-80 fertility program, and made no applications of fungicide. On the high-tech side, we have the same hybrid with additional traits, 8067, that was planted at a population of 38,000. We added 100 pounds of mez, top dressed an additional 75 pounds of nitrogen, and made an application of headline amp at VT. There are no visual or recognizable differences in the plot today, nor was there a year ago in this same demonstration. However, last year's results did show us nearly a 25 bushel difference in yield. And in every case, on the addition side, there was a positive impact on yield. And in every case, on the emission side, there was a negative impact on yield. Our goal is to use a systems approach to prove how these management strategies can be used to utilize to increase your yield. We're looking at this plot to determine what one thing, or in most cases, what combination of things can have the most significant impact to the bottom line on your farm. For example, in last year's data, we determined the addition of fungicide application to the standard set yielded a 17 bushel d acre gain. One might assume that on the high tech side, the omission of fungicide could have the most significant impact as we yield as well. That wasn't the case. In fact, the high tech set, the removal of the extra 100 pounds of mez cost us the most in yield. The best explanation for this being the high-tech set has an additional 6,000 plants per acre to feed. The fertility levels on this farm are excellent, yet if we don't recognize the additional population, we have to supply other additional inputs that could cause yield reduction. Which factor will affect the plot this season? Will the addition of fungicide application yield a 17 bushel increase again? Or perhaps since this year's demonstration is corn on corn, will the addition of the rootworm trait have a positive impact? At this point, with no visual differences, among the treatments, it's difficult to guess. We do know there is much as a $150 cost per acre difference between the high tech and the standard set. Now in today's prices, 25 bushels of corn does not add up to $150. Be nice if it did, but it doesn't. So what do we do with this data? As stated earlier, this is a systems approach to find the synergy that exists between the five biggest components that, control, that you can control in determining yield. The other half of your tour stop today deals with planting depth. How many of you have ever planted too deep or too shallow? What is the proper depth and how important is the proper depth? Planting depth is the most important beginning factor of corn growth. If you think about it, corn in the bag has a 600 bushel yield potential. That potential starts the moment it goes in the ground. The goal is for every plant to look the same as the other plants. We want to have uniform stand and emergence. To achieve this, corn plants need to come up at the same time. Later emerging plants will endure a greater level of competition from earlier emerged plants, which have a size and energy advantage, robbing the late emerging plants of nutrients, water, and sunlight. By achieving optimum planting depth, the seed is placed in an area that has adequate soil moisture, along with guarding against temperature fluctuations, 
and can allow for the development of a healthy root system. Many factors can play into the planting depth other than how the planter is set. Tilled versus no-tilled, wet versus dry, corn on corn versus corn on beans. And I'm even betting one of you in the crowd at one time or another has followed the field cultivator out of the, out of the field as well. What I'm trying to get at here is no field is the same, and each individual field needs to have the planting depth checked and evaluated and adjusted according to conditions. We have a couple of jars here today that are filled with some freshly tilled soil. A few days ago we filled these up, placed a line of masking tape around them at the soil level, and we've just been waiting for two days to see what would happen. As you can see, the soil has settled some. Just as is the case when you're following that cultivator in the field, trying to hurry up and get that field, that field planted before it rains tonight. As mentioned earlier, there are many factors that can play into planting depth, so that it's imperative that you get out and check the depth depth frequently. When measuring the depth, you want to measure the actual trench depth. It can be difficult at times to find the seed, and if you're digging for seed, you can disturb its placement and make determining the actual depth nearly impossible. Optimum trench depth should be between two and a quarter and two and a half inches, bearing in mind that this is most likely not your actual planting depth. Keep in mind that different seeds, different grade sizes, different hybrids can hang up differently or lay differently in the trench. We have this wooden trench board as an example of how your seed can lie in the trench during planting. Let's assume in this case that the large metal nut represents a medium flat, maybe a 38 pound seed, and let's say the golf ball is a large round, 56 pound seed. You can see how the different seed sizes or grade sizes can lay in the trench following planting. We at Landis Cooperative believe that your seed placement should never be less than two inches deep. Now that we got that out of the way, we can get the dollars that it can cost you or save you by simply checking where your seed is laying. Last year, this demonstration showed a phenomenal response to planting depth. If you look at this aerial photo taken about this time last year, you can see a noticeable difference from the one inch to two inch planting depths. This photo should really drive home the point Keith and I are trying to make. The population of the photo this time was taken, the one inch depth had an 18,500 population out of a planted 34,500. Just that alone, that's $28 in seed costs that you put in the ground that either never came up or made it to maturity. At harvest, one inch planting depth showed a $226 loss in revenue as well. Combined, that's $255 per acre that were lost by just worth getting out and checking where your corn is planted. With shallow planting corn, corn is usually going to have shallow roots as well. In severe cases, shallow planted corn can cause rootless corn syndrome. Without good deep roots, what is going to absorb or intercept the nutrients available to that plant? We are showing you a mohawk root as well, so you can see the effect that it will have even in wet planting conditions. Those roots are going to act the same as a shallow root. It may have been planted at the correct depth, but the wet trench or smeared trench it was planted into hindered the root growth. Now at the two, three, and four inch depths last year, there was no visual differences as well as very little yield difference. A small interesting note from last year's data is that our four inch depth yielded the best at 238. It's not always the case, and last year's weather conditions may have had effect on that. By no means are we at Landis Cooperative recommending that we plant your corn at four inches deep. As you can see over there, we put together a board with each planting depth. For each depth, we have a section representing one one thousandth of an acre. We also have roots displayed for each depth as well. The planted population out here was 34,500. We took four stand counts at each depth and averaged those. The one inch depth had a range of everywhere from 16,000 to 27,000 for an average of about 21,250. That's nearly 13,000 plants per acre that either did not grow or did not make it to maturity. Now on the other three depths, the average population was all plus or minus about 32,000. And you can see that in those situations, there's only about 4,000 plants difference from the high count to the low count on all the other three depths. When it comes to yield, there's a significant impact as well. As you might imagine, with the loss in the population at the one inch depth, there's a significant yield reduction too. Our estimates today show that that may only be at 140 bushels per acre. Now it's interesting to note, however, that the ears are all roughly the same size regardless of the planting depth. 
In conclusion, we would like to reiterate the fact that it always err on the side of too deep rather than too shallow. We recommend here at Landis Cooperative you keep your seed trench between two and a quarter and two and a half inches deep. We know in the spring everyone is in a hurry to get out, get the corn planted, but please take some time, get out, and evaluate your seed planting depth. It's in your best interest to do so and does not take much time at all. And stay in touch with your local Landis Cooperative agronomist to hear how this year's omission addition trials turn out. Which one key factor or two or three key factors can you implement on your farm to improve your yields? Thank you for taking time out of your day to come and visit one of the most innovative cooperative plots in the state of Iowa.